Hello chess friends, in this video we will be looking at a game played by the Cuban genius Josh Raul Capablanca, the great great Capablanca, the third world chess champion. Okay, and one of the most brilliant when it comes to end games. Uh, it was because of his games and his play that uh, we have so uh, we have greatly improved our understanding of chess and end games both in general. So this uh, game was played in 1990. Uh, so it was Capablanca versus Conde. It was played in Hastings. So here we go. This is move number 29. As you can see, Black King has just stepped to the c6 square and now he's attacking the knight on d5. From here on, I'll just go ahead and uh, whenever there'll be a critical point in the game, I'll just pause and uh, I'll ask you to you know find the move and uh, let's see if you can uh, come up with the correct correct moves. I think this will this is a very good exercise and can help us a lot. This game, I just looked at it an hour ago. I haven't looked at many Capablanca games. This was a drawback of my chess and I'm starting to focus on a lot of Capablanca games and it's simply marvelous. Uh, and this game will definitely have a great impact on you if you're looking at this for the first time. So in this position, white continued with c4, you know, just cementing the knight on d5, properly cementing this and also stopping, blockading the pawns on c5 and d5. So this is a very good strategy. And now here comes the main point. Black plays knight f6. Here comes the first question. Should white as Kapalpanka exchange the knight on f6 or just retreat it back with something like knight e3 maybe or knight c3 or should he just capture? Now this is a decision you have to take. Just put yourself in Kapalpanka's shoes and try to uh, find the correct solution, con correct continuation. How would you play here as white? Obviously this is very important. If you trade the knight, you have to correctly assess the position as the black king is super active and things might happen. So go ahead, pause the video and try to find the continuation. Okay, so I hope you have come up with the correct continuation. Kapalanka in the game did not retreat the knight but instead went on to capture. And this, when I was looking at the game, this came as a surprise because what I thought was okay, black spawn are definitely damaged. And yes, we have a pawn majority that is like four against three on the king side. But isn't black just about to play d65? And his king is just right in the center of the board, whereas our king is nearly in the corner, right? Just one square away from the corner square. And how are we going to black uh, match black's activity? Capablanca has seen something that we haven't, and this is definitely uh, going to teach us a lot of things. So in this position, after exchanging on f6, he played a4. This is a very, very interesting move. Again, it looks very dubious. Why are we playing on the queen side? Why are we pushing them forward and making them easy targets for the black king? After all, he's just about to play d5. And why shouldn't we just start pushing the pawns on the king side? Here comes the, here comes the idea. Black plays d5 and white answers that not with capturing the pawn, but playing b3. So basically, if he captures, then we can simply capture black followed by playing f4 and then all of these squares will be, you know, under white's control and black cannot invade our position. On the other hand, white has a pawn majority on the king side. He will be able to uh, create a passed pawn. So black realizing that does not capture on c4, but rather pushes forward. And black is now saying, buddy, I've got a passed pawn. It basically means that white's king will now have to stay on d3 or some of this square somewhere around the pawn just to stop that pawn. In, in short, the white king's mobility has been lessened down. So why is white playing in this way? We'll soon find out. He has again seen something that we haven't and this is going to be a great lesson. So f4, first of all, taking control of the e5 square and basically making it impossible for the white king to break through and, you know, just to enter white's position from any of the sides. So basically the king can't really harass white pawns. So our pawns are safe at the moment. Let's see how the game continues. Now just g4 you know just protecting the pawn creating a pawn chain stopping h4 very important move and taking control of the h5 square basically so black basically we are just squeezing black one by one and that's let's see how the game continues again king to e7 we advance our king we put it on e4 so we are just you know looking at uh taking uh, taking a charge of this uh, pawn basically he is incapable of moving forward we'll just capture it so okay what's the point again Black just plays king to d6 and how are we going to break? Well, the most natural moves looks to be something like, you know, h4 and g5. 
But then isn't Black going to stop that with his king? After all, he has his own past pawn, so he can deflect our king as well. And how is White going to win this game? Here comes the point. This is absolutely brilliant. Just look at this. First we play h4, king moves, and White now goes ahead and plays b4. This is simply, simply brilliant, brilliant move. I had not expected this move when I was looking at the game. So first things first, if c takes, then we capture the pawn on d4 and then we have a pass c pawn and our pass c pawn will coordinate with a passed pawn on the g file. And again, you can see there is so there is a difference of three files between both the pa passed pawns of white. That makes it impossible for the black king to stop both the pawns at the same time. So black just said, okay, all right, no problem. I'm going to cap capture the pawn with my a pawn. And now, I have two passes, one is a d pawn and the other is a b pawn, where is white's play? And this is again very astounding, very surprising play as I was looking at this, I was really surprised why is white playing in this way? The reason is very simple actually. The difference between the both the past one is not very much, it's just one file, right? There is only a gap of one file between both of them, which means that the white king will actually be able to hold both the uh, black pawn. On the other hand, white will now have a passed pawn, one on the A file, other on the G file, and there is a huge gap between those pawns. The black king is simply too slow to cap to you know, stop both the pawns. So he, the pawns are just miles apart, and uh, whereas black pawn will be will be easily stopped, white pawn cannot be stopped, and that was the whole point. The distance between the passed pawns is not enough for black to win. So. Uh, this is really a great move, b4 by white. So now let's go ahead and let's see what's the move that was played. So after b4, black takes the pawn and here we go, a5, deflecting the king to the, starting to deflect the king to the other side. He just goes king c7 and it's time to create another pass pawn on the g file. Yes, you've all guessed it right, we play g5, h, uh, f takes, f takes, h takes, h takes and he is trying to be clever. He's trying to, you know, go forward. We are just going to play king d3. The pawn is under control. Now, if he goes just b2, we can just play king c2 and take the pawn. Next move, it's very easy. And again, you can see that the white king is actually very easily able to stop, uh, control both the black pawn because there is only a difference of one file in between both of them. Something which uh, is worth learning from this game. And on the other hand, the difference between White's passes is huge. It's 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 continents between them. So, king to d7. We play g6, and after takes takes. This is the point where black resigns the game. White has a pass pawn on the g file. He has a pass pawn on the a file. Both are runners. Black king can only stop one of them, and that is not enough. White will easily promote. Whereas his pawn, as you can see, they are not going anywhere. He just plays b2. We play king c2. He plays d3. We take the pawn and we go for the other pawn. The difference between both the pass of pawns is just minimum, that is one file, and that is why black's passes are incapable of winning, whereas white's pass pawn are easily going to win. And this is something uh, that Capablanca actually has had already had an idea of this uh, right here when he exchanged the knights at this point on f6. He already saw that at some point he will be able to play b4, and that is the reason he you play something like a4. a4 is a very uh, it's not very obvious move after all black is going to get massive activity with his king and yeah this is something which you which i have learned a lot from this game and i think uh, i hope you have also learned something out of this game so we are going to go uh, and look at more capablanca games i think this is a great great way of learning in games and in general the whole game uh, i'm really enjoying the capablanca saga as i've started to you know go through his games so let's see let's see We'll have more games, more videos on the way. Thank you for watching. And by the way, if you are new to, new to my YouTube channel, do subscribe as there are regular uh, updates on the channel. So, bye.